Ooh, this is hot. Hi, Romario. Hi, Fernando. Hi, Fernando Base. Hi. <laughs> it's good to see you. Good evening, everybody. So let's just wait a little bit. Hi, Basil. How are you? I see you. Hi, Westland Jam. And Stephen and Kyle and Irul and Andrea Finley and Priceless Chris. Hi, Oshini. Got you. Hmm. How has the Sunday been? We have a no movement day in Jamaica. So I've been at home, chilling, cooking, writing, reading. And um, I thought that certainly this is what, like the fourth week of no movement in Jamaica on a Sunday. I wanted to share some thoughts with you, if you don't mind. Hi Lisa, what are you drinking? I'm actually drinking some um, coffee. Some really good coffee, actually. Some good Jamaican coffee. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to sleep. But that's what I'm drinking, so I don't know if you can see the, the, um, the steam coming out of it, but it's nice. So I think all of us are over the corona pandemic. In other words, we have been experiencing some form of disruption to our life for the last two years, whether it is in business, whether it is in our children going to school, whether it is in our emotional stability or mental health stability. And incidentally, today is World Mental Health Day. But there has been significant disruptions. For those of us who live in Jamaica, those disruptions have been consistent, have been disturbing on many levels, and there are some headwinds that we're going into. Now, obviously, there is no one size fit all for what every country has been experiencing in terms of Corona. But I'm a little concerned, and I think if you have been following the things that I've been saying and writing, you will realize that I have some serious concerns about when we get out of this COVID fog, that we go forward and not return to pre-COVID. In other words, Jamaica really needs to leapfrog to ensure that we become globally competitive to move our people forward and the country forward so that in the next 10 to 15 years, we can move our lower class to the middle class and even beyond. Because other countries have been doing it. If you look at China, for example, China has moved their middle class, it's one of the fastest growing middle classes in the, in the, that the world has ever seen. Now, 700 million people um, have been moved to the middle class, and they did that in, in the space of, of maybe 30 years. So what it means is that we have to get going. We, are, we need to recognize what the world looks like. And as I said in my article today, there is no new world. The new world has been here for a while. And that new world looks very different to perhaps what the G7 countries back in the day thought it would have looked like, what the Germanys, what the you know, Great Britons, what the United States, because this, this axis of economic activity has been shifted to the East. And what do I mean by the East? Countries, emerging markets like Indonesia, India, China, other countries even like Brazil, between 2000 and 2010, really upped their game. And they started doing different things in terms of contributing to the global productivity market. So the world was changing and it's ever changing and it's dynamic. There's no set rules of protection for anybody now, especially smaller countries, and it's rooted in technology. So anybody that really thought that Corona was what brought on online shopping, that's not exactly true. People have been doing online shopping for many years. If you look at two of China's largest 
eTraders, Alibaba, and JD.com. In just last year, China has something called Singles Day. It's the antithesis to Valentine's Day. So every November 11th, singles get out and they buy things. Last year, those two e-commerce sites in China made 115 billion US dollars. That's 20 times the size of the Jamaican budget. Now, now why am I saying this? I'm saying it because Jamaica has an extreme opportunity to be able to pivot and go in a direction where we can find meaningful solutions to grow our economy. But first, we have to recognize that where the world has, has gone to is it exists without borders. So you need to have a digital backbone as a country and, and, and establish your country with a significant broadband network. And the problem is we're late. And it doesn't mean we can't catch up, but it means we have to put the resources that we have, the limited resources, in the directions that we need to use them. So when the minister, for example, the Honorable Daryl Vaz came to parliament last week, time is running away from now, or week before last, he mentioned that right now Jamaica needs 300,000 uh, meters of fiber optic broadband networking to go into the middle of the island, and you need another 200,000 um, meters of broadband fiber optic to go from one point which is in St. James to the other point which is in Portland to be able to even give our children at school access to the kinds of internet facilities that they need. That's a lot, but we can get it done. He also mentioned that we are establishing 189 hotspots across the country for, for um, at central places, but Jamaica needs to become one big hotspot. Why? Because right now, there is a segment of the world, and they're called millennials, those that generation that's between the age of 26 to 40, that were born between 1981 and I believe like 1996. And they, they're about, they make up 23% of the world's population. 600 million of them alone, I believe, live in, in this vicinity of the West. And last year alone, they spent $2.3 billion. That generation, the millennials, has the most spending power in world history. And what they, what they do is a lot of that purchasing power, 73% of that population says that they use their phones to shop online. Another 75% of them say that social media is what guides their purchasing power. Now, if you have such a large segment of an audience, so many of them exist, and you can actually tap into their homes, tap into their spaces, Jamaica needs to now pivot in finding something, whether it is a service, whether it is a good, to sell to that generation. That generation alone spent $17 billion on dog food. Dog food. And so they're looking for things to buy. Now, they're a fitness generation, they're very much into organics. They like things that are very boutique and very different and exclusive. And Jamaica can offer that. So imagine what it would be like if some, a young woman from my constituency who is tech savvy, who probably has an associate degree in marketing, or just, you know, as somebody said under the comment of the article today, or just has um, marketing skills. Imagine her mother, who is a farmer, or her father, and she can have an online situation where she moves her, her mother's um, produce, whether it's value added or primary, straight from the ground farm to table in the United States or Britain. But what it means is that Jamaica has to form the logistical know-how to get that young person and that farmer to move from St. Anne to export all the way through. You need that entire value chain to work, which we don't have. And so these are the kinds of things that we need to, to, to be thinking about because it exists. So rather than us saying, well, with the same kind of tourism, Barbados has pivoted to long stay tourism, you know, places like Costa Rica. And if, you, if you've been reading what I've been saying about medical tourism 
Jamaica has an opportunity for medical tourism as well. But we have to start thinking outside of the box. And what it also means is that Jamaicans have to recognize that to have real prosperity, you can't only sell to 3 million people, which is our population. You have to sell to 30 million, 300 million. So it means that we can't produce samples. I was reading a news story today where in some of the largest greenhouses in the world, they have robots picking tomatoes. I have people in my constituency that are still trying to get half a bag of fertilizer from Rado and a water tank. We have to think big and we cannot allow ourselves to, start to, to continue to think small. The world is going to leave us. And traditional tourism, primary agriculture, BPO is good and it's working, but it's not the only thing, right? And the remittances alone can't save us. So we have to start pivoting. If you speak to business people now, they will tell you that even the persons who are in India, the young people are in India, they're competing with because they can give you a, an e-commerce platform cheaper than we can do it in Jamaica. So our young people need to also understand that you're not competing against Jamaicans anymore for jobs. And in this world without borders because of technology, you have to be at the top of your game. The top 10 in-demand jobs that existed, exist today did not exist 10 years ago. It's like I tell people all the time, the man that used to sell, or woman that used to sell Encyclopedia Britannica that come to the gate, that man doesn't exist anymore because of Google. So young people in high school and primary school need to understand that they can stay right here and work in another part in the world, but you have to be qualified because you are competing against a child in China, India, the United States. You're competing against children in emerging markets at this point. There's a reason why the Squid Game is the number one hit on Netflix and why everybody is watching it and it's a streaming show. It's because of digital technology and streaming. And you don't understand that in the same way they can reach into your home, you can reach into theirs. So we have to, that is one of the reasons why I, I wanted to talk to you this evening because I worry about how fast we're moving. I worry about um, us taking too long with this pivot. I worry about us as leaders many times thinking about that you have to wait until the next general election to be able to make change. No, we don't. We have to come together as the brightest minds in the country, both in terms of academia, in terms of government, in terms of opposition, in terms of, of, of business people. Because right now in Jamaica, 20%, anywhere between 20, I would say to 25% of our youth population, those people who are under 24, are unemployed. And we have to find a mechanism to make that generation have something to do. I don't want to see a country where we still have people at the bottom quintile of, of earning money. Because when Corona started and as it progressed, there were about, a, there are a large segment of our population that were earning below minimum wage. And minimum wage in Jamaica is $7,000 a week. That's 47 US dollars a week. If you think about that, Right, and if you even break it down further to what that looks like a day, people can't live on that. And so we have to take the per capita income of our people up, which is what they make a year, and we have to take what they make a week to livable standards. But to do that, we have to grow the economy, and we have to position ourselves in a way that our brand does not diminish. So we have to fix crime in this country. We have to fix education in this country. And we have to make sure that we have health care so that people will want to come and invest. Those things are not going to happen overnight, right? But they also should not be a, 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 a situation where we don't agree on things. Um, I could get into education as well, but I know that some of you have, have questions. And um, I'd be happy to answer your questions at this point in time. Um, so if you have any questions, you can let me know and I can, I can take some of them or if you wanted me to um, continue, I can also continue and, and speak a little bit more. The, the, the other major crisis that we're heading into is an education crisis. It's been two years into Corona and the statistics demonstrate